With all of the different roles that Jeffrey Combs has played throughout Star Trek, you'd be forgiven for thinking that his quote-unquote starring one could have been any of them, really. But, as you've probably guessed by the title of this article, this one is going to be about his big old blue boy. With that in mind, I'm Sean Ferrick for Trek Culture, and here are 10 things you didn't know about Thylak Shran. Number 10. Nobody else could play the part. When casting the role of a recurring character, Star Trek's casting directors often have entire phone books of reliable names they can call upon, who sit for hours on end in makeup to portray myriad characters across Star Trek's multiple series. Of all these names, few have such regard in the fan community as Jeffrey Combs. Reoccurring to the point of being meme-worthy, Combs' Trek acting CV includes Pink in Voyager's Sunkatsi, the Ferengi Krem in Enterprise's earlier episode Acquisition, and the megalomaniacal supercomputer Agamus in multiple episodes of Lower Decks. It's in Deep Space Nine, however, where Combs truly made his first mark, appearing as Tyron in the episode Meridian, as well as the recurring roles of Brunt, FCA, and five different versions of Wayun. It's unsurprising then that, when the time came to cast Shran, the team behind the camera knew exactly who to call. Combs was offered the part without even auditioning, and impressed the crew with his ability to act past the slightly silly antennae and to create a character who could portray both threat and pathos with the kind of depth the role demanded. Number 9. Season 5 Despite a devoted fan base and stronger writing across seasons 3 and 4, the writing was on the wall for Enterprise as early as season 2's finale. Staffing shifts and studio interference at Paramount, as well as declining viewing figures, led to Enterprise dropping to a doomed Friday night broadcast slot. And sure enough, on the 2nd of February 2005, the show was cancelled and there was no Trek on TV for the first time in 18 years. The cancellation came as a sting to many, but served as a colossal missed opportunity for Shran actor Jeffrey Combs. Had Enterprise made it past its fourth season, plans were in place to bring Shran onto the bridge of Enterprise in Season 5. Serving as an auxiliary officer and advisor to Archer, Shran would bring another perspective amidst the tentative alliance between Earth, Vulcan and Andoria. Despite his numerous credits in Trek, Combs has never had the honour of his name in the opening credits. Discovering these plans after the cancellation, he probably put it best, commenting, Ah, man, that one got away. Dang it. Coulda, shoulda, woulda. Maybe one day, Jeffrey. Maybe one day. Number 8. He has two ships named after him. Although his initial appearances wouldn't suggest as such, Shran would become a key player in the early days of the Federation, even helping to stop the destruction of Earth by the Zindi reptilian Dolem. Whether or not his heroic act may be down to Shran's constant attempts to settle the score with Captain Archer, you can't argue with results. Sure enough, in the centuries following the Zindi conflict, Shran's name would adorn two separate Federation starships seen in the series. The first ship, both in terms of broadcast and chronology, would be the USS Shran. Operating in 2256, the Shran is one of many ships involved in the Battle of the Binary Stars, the kicking off point for Star Trek Discovery and the opening conflict in the Federation Klingon War. A massacre for the Federation, the Shran is one of at least 12 starships destroyed in the conflict. Warping ahead almost 150 years, the antagonistic commander's name would pop up again, adorning the hull of the USS Thylak Shran in Star Trek Picard, docked at Sol Station whilst Admiral Picard and Captain Riker make their way to the USS Titan A. Number 7. He has two names. Outside of the canonical television series, the Star Trek novels have become a boundless resource for further reading to either expand upon the characters and plots within the series or, controversially, to retcon them and then tell all new tales. Nowhere is this more apparent than in the 2007 novel The Good That Men Do, reframing the events of Enterprise's disastrous finale, These Are The Voyages. The novel involves DS9's Jake Sisko and Nog uncovering declassified Federation data chips concerning the events seen in Riker holodeck program. It is revealed that the official record of events on the holodeck are a fabrication, and that Trip Tucker's death was faked so that he could carry out undercover work for the clandestine Section 31. Featuring prominently in the novel, Shran's name is given as Hravishan Thesahori. This tongue twister of a name fits more closely with the Andorian naming conventions established in the earlier DS9 relaunch novels, and the in-universe explanation has Thylak as the Enar form of his name. Why use his Enar name off-world? Well, see how long you last correcting people's pronunciation of Hravishan Thesahori. Number 6. His great-grandson. Despite their cordial relationships in later centuries, Earth's early encounters with the Klingons could be best described as somewhere between antagonistic and outright hostile. As NX-01 began boldly going into the stars, 
they would have a few run-ins with the Empire, including Archer being labelled as an enemy of the state, but then Phlox averting a lethal plague during the Augment Crisis. In the years following these events, the Federation was formed, and encounters with Klingons became very scarce. All this changed, however, with the onset of the Federation Klingon War in 2256 at the Battle of the Binary Stars. Although this battle would spell the end of the ship bearing Shran's name, his legacy would live on aboard the USS Sabrova, captained by his great-grandson, Thykir. Appearing in the Age of Discovery expansion of Star Trek Online, this junior Shran assists the player in several missions, including the defense of Starbase 1. Voiced once again by Combs and with a noticeable resemblance to his ancestor, this Shran is determined to take the fight to the Klingons and step out of his great-grandfather's shadow. Number 5. His Mirror Universe Counterpart Appearing across 16 different episodes in four different shows to date, the Mirror Universe has been a reliable source of narrative material for Star Trek writers for decades. Whether it's a terrifying exploration of inverted morality, a daft excuse for actors to ham it up, or a weird way to make Kieran Reese as horny as possible, episodes in this brutal world always have something unexpected for the viewer to enjoy. In the world of the Star Trek novels, this universe of evil twins and even more evil facial hair is just as ripe for stories as its on-screen counterparts. Following on from the events of the Enterprise two-parter In a Mirror Darkly, the 2007 novel Age of the Empress finds the mirror Hoshi Sato consolidating her power after taking over the Empire with a time-displaced USS Defiant. Sato, in an effort to curry favour, takes on this universe's General Shran both as her romantic consort and military leader. However, as is customary for mirror storylines, betrayal and double crosses lead to Shran seizing the throne for himself, overseeing savage bombings of civilian targets, before Sato summarily retakes the throne and has him executed. Nice bit of light reading then. Number 4. Missing Link Following Enterprise's cancellation in 2005, the future seemed hazy for the entire Star Trek franchise. For the first time in 18 years, there was no Star Trek on screen, and Paramount were determined to find a way to reboot the series in the wake of Enterprise's lackluster crawl across the finish line. Although the hard reboot would come in 2009 with the release of J.J. Abrams' timeline-busting Star Trek movie, there were originally plans for a much more continuity-honouring project. Star Trek The Beginning was originally pitched to Paramount as a first draft in August 2006. Set four years after the events of Terra Prime, the de facto finale for fans who consider these of the voyages to be heresy, the script concerns the beginnings of the Earth-Romulan War and would kick off a trilogy of films culminating in a bridge to the original series. Although this movie would have been the first Star Trek film to include no mainline characters, the only familiar face would have been none other than Commander Shran. Although his role in the movie is completely unknown, promising Jeffrey Combs is usually a surefire way to get Trekkies interested. Number 3. Quintessential Andorian Despite their position as one of the four founding races of the Federation alongside humans, Vulcans and Tellarites, it took a long time for Andorians to have significant representation in Star Trek. With only 10 appearances leading up to Enterprise, including one purely holographic one, the writing team were determined to take this previously silly looking race and turn them into believable players on the intergalactic stage. Owing to advancements in makeup and prosthetics, as well as servo mechanics to make their antennae functional, a respectable appearance was designed, but it would take a memorable performance to match which would truly establish the race. Sure enough, the gamble paid off. With a cast of Andorian characters led by Jeffrey Combs' fantastically wily Commander Shran, the race was lent enough legitimacy to recur with such varied characters as Rin in Discovery, Tysus in Prodigy, and Jennifer in Lower Decks, as well as the Enar Hemmer in Strange New Worlds. Of all the myriad Andorians who have graced our screens, it's probably Shran who stands out the most, with Rin actor Noah Averbert Katz citing Combs' performance as inventing the Andorians. Still no word on some deep and meaningful Tellarites, though. Although Jan Kumpog gave it a go. Number 2. He makes a 1992 video game canon. Despite its prevalence within the realms of television, film and books, Star Trek has a remarkably small footprint when it comes to the world of gaming. Although over 60 games sporting the license have been released over the span of Star Trek's tenure, Star Trek Online is arguably the only one to have really made a mark on the gaming landscape. However, somebody on the writing team of Enterprise's Season 3 episode Proving Ground was clearly a fan of the 1992 Star Trek 25th Anniversary PC game. In the episode, whilst contacting the Zindi in his effort to scan or steal their superweapon, Shran poses as a member of the Andorian Mining Consortium. 
A seemingly innocuous and throwaway line to all but the most die-hard of fans, the consortium is actually mentioned in the 1992 game as the third largest private corporation in the Federation. The name would crop up again online in April 2020 with the Facebook page The Andorian Memeing Consortium sharing Star Trek related memes and boasting over 24,000 followers at the time of writing. Although we can't credit this one to Shran himself, we can't help but think that the group may not exist without him keeping the name alive. Number 1. He's… left-handed? Throughout the four-year run of Enterprise, Shran proves himself to be a valuable ally, dangerous opponent, fiercely intelligent tactician, and a capable warrior any time the Enterprise finds themselves either facing him down or by his side. How much more impressive it is then to find out that Shran is achieving all of these feats with his non-dominant hand. Indeed, although Shran's first appearance on Pajem has him dual-wielding Andorian rifles, and he proceeds to spend the rest of the episode definitely favouring his right hand whilst holding his rifle, a communicator, or his fist while beating Archer for information, the website StarTrek.com definitively states that he's left-handed. Is this a continuity oversight on the part of the official website for the Star Trek fanbase? Perhaps something Shran has had to overcome for the right-hand-focused Ushan combat ritual? Does Andorian dexterity work differently than we humans? Perhaps a tie-in novel will answer these questions one day. All I know right now is you asked for 10 facts, and this is certainly one of them. Folks, thank you so much for watching along. This has been a hoot, and it's always good to get some more Andorians out there. If you want to check out the original article, make sure you do that. It was written by Nick Edgeworth, and it's available over on whatculture.com. Thank you very much to our wonderful editor, Martin, for making this video something that you have enjoyed in your eyeballs. I have been Sean Ferrick. Now, you can follow us all over on Twitter, at Trek Culture. You can follow us on Instagram, at Trek Culture YT. We are on Blue Sky, at Trek Culture as well. I am at Sean Ferrick on the various socials. Everyone, look after yourself until I'm talking to you again. Make sure that you live long and prosper. Make sure that if you are engaged Engaging in the Ushan combat. I mean, it doesn't have to be lethal. Maybe you can just have a sip of Andorian ale and call it a day. Whatever you end up doing, look after yourself. Thanks very much. Bye.